Hey, problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today's video is about these ramps and slopes and rates of change. Um, before I get started on these ramps, let me just say safety has to be number one. Make sure you strap the ramp to the truck so you and the bike or whatever it is don't go flying all over the place. Slope is rise over the run. So it's how far you go up versus how far you go along. Another name for slope is tangent. Tangent is actually a trig function where it's the opposite over the adjacent, meaning it's going to be opposite leg of a triangle, which is going to be rise over adjacent, which is going to be run. So tangent, slope, the letter M all represent the same thing. You see it in all sorts of places, whether you're talking about the pitch of a roof or loading ramp, slope is a really big idea. And rates of change are also a really big idea. You could have a straight line or a straight ramp where there's no, where the rate of change is a constant. You could be increasing at a decreasing rate when you have a convex curve like this, or you could be increasing at an increasing rate where you'd have a concave curve. So I'll put the camera over my shoulder. I'll go over some of those ideas in this video. I'll keep it really short. The big idea here really is both slope and rates of change and how it's applicable in so many fields in so many different places. Okay, so all this stuff is really done on what's called the Cartesian coordinate system. Um, kind of a cool system. There's four quadrants. Uh, let's see here. This would be quadrant one, two, three, and four. A lot of times you just stay in the first quadrant, so you're always talking about positive values. Your independent variable is x. It's always a horizontal axis. The vertical axis is y, and this is your dependent variable. A couple different ways to look at slope. The first is a straight line. That straight line has a constant increase in x to a constant increase in y. So no matter where you're on that line, you draw vertically, horizontally, that will always be the same ratio as that. Even if I did it on this side, that over that would be the same ratio as those. So let's say here I rise two, run two. Here I run six, rise six. Here maybe I run three and run, rise three, run three. All of those, M, are the same slope. Rise over run. And that'll reduce to one or six over six still reduces to one. So it's a constant slope anywhere on that straight line. If you're talking about pitches, you usually talk about a six and 12, that's six over 12, or 12 and 12, three and 12, those are all common pitches on a roof. If we're talking about our ramp, you wanna know how high the tailgate is and how long the horizontal is, and that'll give you your slope. Whether you're loading bikes into the back of a truck or riding bikes or four-wheel drive, slope's one of the biggest ideas for um, power consumption going up or braking coming down. Okay, here's another graph set. Again, we're working in the first quadrant. Now I'm going to look at a graph that starts at the origin, which is the coordinate 0, 0, and starts increasing at an increasing rate, meaning that down here, the slope is, say, 1 in rise and 3 in run. But over here, now for 2 rise, i only running 2. And then over here, for 3 rise, I'm only ru running 1. So here the slope is rise over run, 3 over 1. Here the slope is 2 over 2, which is 1. Here the slope is rise over run, one over three. So as I travel along this curve, I'm increasing at an increasing rate. From here to here, I increase by two thirds. From here to here, I increase by two. And then, you know, eventually I'm gonna to get to this place where I'm rising a whole lot and running very little. So here, let's say I rise five and I run one. So it increases at an increasing rate and it's a concave graph. Again, y my vertical axis dependent variable, x my horizontal axis, my independent variable. So if I was talking about world population, say, it would start right here at zero, zero, 
and it would increase at an increasing rate, the number of people in the world, so this would be population, would depend on time. So population of the world is your y-axis, independent variable x would be time, and it increases at an increasing rate. One more set of coordinate axes here, y and x, and now I'm going to increase at a decreasing rate, and that's kind of what those ramps look like. They're concave at the top here. Um, but what that means here is, let's say here I rise one, two, three, four, five. I run three, so my slope here is five over three, five thirds. Then right here I rise two, run two. So now my slope is two over two or one. Now I rise one, run two. Here my slope is rise one, run two, one half. And then here I rise one and I run more like three. So here my slope is a third. So I'm increasing at a decreasing rate. So the slope's changing and getting flatter and flatter. Eventually it'll probably come down, you know, almost to flat. Just like in the other one, it's increasing at an increasing rate. It's getting closer and closer to vertical. It's an approaching a vertical. One thing is on these curves, you really don't have a slope at a given point. But if I have a curve like this, this line tied right to that is actually called a line of tangency. And it's called the line of tangency so you can find the slope of a curve at a given point. And it, like I said earlier, tangent is a trig function. It means opposite over adjacent. If you're talking about a right triangle like this, this would be the opposite leg, the adjacent leg. This would be the slope right here. And it opposite would be the same as a rise. Adjacent would be the same as a run. In this case, my opposite leg's three. My adjacent leg, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my slope here, m, would be equal to rise over run, opposite over adjacent. Kind of cool, kind of cool stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video about slope, rates of change, rise over the run. You can see in these right here, so the constant slope up to here it increases at a decreasing rate. A couple reasons you do that. One is as your bike's going up, you're, you want your angle to start to approach the bed, but you don't want the whole ramp to be like that. Otherwise, it would be hard to get started on it. Also, you know, like if you have like a tread or track, you really don't want to go flying up in the air and then clunk over like that. If you like that video, hit like. Uh, my goal here is to look at some practical math ideas that you could take out into the shop, out into life, math ideas that you might use every day. I appreciate you watching. If you're new to the channel, think about subscribing. And uh, if you have any more questions or comments, please write them in the comments section below. I read all of those and I reply to all of them. So I appreciate you all watching and thank you. Do these work.